Hi everyone, it's Amy from Now Polish Baby 90 and welcome to today's video. Today I'm here with something exciting. So this is going to be a Topic Tuesday, all the Topic Tuesday video. If you haven't heard of Topic Tuesday, it's something that's been going around for a really long time now. Originally Jodie's Polish was the originator and then since then our own Brit, Amanda from the Now Polish Ham comes up with it. I will link the Instagram here for you. But basically, it's, I think it's once a week, on a Tuesday, they ask people to kind of post and comment on a question. So there's a question posted, and then you post your response on a Tuesday. I've never really done it because I'm not that great at planning things on uh, Instagram. Um, and also, they've never really been long enough subjects for me to do like one video per topic Tuesday. But today I'm going to go through as many questions as I can in the next 10 minutes, kind of give you as quick as I can, uh, like quick fire answers to them. And yeah, I'm going to try and be less chatty and get more answers done. If there are any that are what's your favourite yellow, blue colour categories, I'm not going to answer those because I have a colour favourite series. But let's go and go through as many Topic Tuesdays in the next 10-ish minutes. Okay, here we go. What is the maximum number of coats that you will do? Um, I'm gonna go with three. Um, if I have find a polish that is brand new, that takes four, I will do that four once, but I will probably never wear it again. So three is fine. What is the color polish that you have the most of? Um, I'm gonna say anything in kind of the blue category. So all shades of blue and probably including blurple. I love blue so, so, so much. What polishes do you regret not buying that are now impossible to find? Ooh. I mean, there's so many polishes these days that are limited edition when it comes to indies. Everything in, in the indie world pretty much is limited edition, so there are plentiful of indies throughout the years that I have missed out on that I'm really bummed about. Um, I always go back to the same story, though, that is the, probably my best answer, is way back when I was collecting nail polish, I went to Sally's Beauty Supply, and this is literally like within the first six months of me being into nail polish, and they had a ton of collection polishes. They had, like, all the old, the James Bond collection, they had all of the Spider-Man open PI collection and I was like do I want these do I not and in hindsight a hundred percent I wanted them I should have picked them all up because now icons the underrated brands that deserve more love this is really hard as well because sometimes I feel that it is really easy just to go to the bigger indies or the ones that we see the most on our Instagram pages but I have enjoyed buying from newer polishes I'm going to give like all the UK ladies a big shout out because all of our UK brands are, I guess, are less well known some of them are in polish pickup and hella handmade creations and there are e-distributors but wicked polish prison polish dangle foot all of our UK indies and many many more that I haven't mentioned there they are great when it comes to international US brands I really love Linby designs I think they have really good polishes and they normally do really good deals and I don't always see too much about them on the gram but I personally have had a really great experience with them they ship to the UK um, and I wish people talked about them more anything that I can that I mention I'm going to link down below and put pictures up if I can because I'm just trying to get as quick as I can Favourite polishes for stamping. There's a few questions on here about stamping. Um, I only own, the stamping plates that I own are from Moyo, Muyu, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And I have a couple of Conad ones. Conad was the brand back in the day. When it comes to stamping polishes, I own a ton from Twinkle Tea. I'm very lucky that I have worked with them in the past and I did do a video on their entire stamping range Um that they had at the time I think there's maybe some more now so Twinkle Tea is what I own the most of although I'm not a stamping connoisseur I don't do it a lot I need to do it a lot more favorite polishes for summer neons and white pretend you're creating your own custom nail polish collection what would it look like I've said before a few times that I've toyed with making my own indie nail polish like brand I've kind of got we've got a logo that we have done and a name and some collections and polishes but I would make just tons of Corellis basically if I was going to make polishes what is the biggest factor you consider when buying a nail polish? I think price is number one. I think sometimes the, the, some of the indies tend to get a bit overpriced these days. There I'm going to say it. Some of them are crazy expensive. And maybe that is from my perception of having to buy them from outside of the country in which they are made. So I'm talking about some of the US brands. And some of the polishes that go into polish pickup get crazy expensive. So I do consider price a lot. I also consider, do I have anything similar? Which I never did back in the day. I was just like, pretty buy it, pretty buy it. Um, and then now I do have some indies, even the indies that are, are similar enough that I definitely don't need both. So price and trying 
to not buy one if I already have one similar, but sometimes I can't help myself. Favourite nail art technique. I do not do nail art at all. And that was the, actually the first thing that I did when I started wearing nail polish. Like, I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I've done this nail polish story. I can't even think how old I was. Maybe like 20? Something like that. I started doing more nail art. That's what I dabbled into. So I did like some ombres. I did stamping. I did some freehand very badly. Um, and then since then I then realised that that wasn't exactly what I was great at. Um, but I do need to revisit it. And I always say I'm going to do a series of me learning how to do nail art. So I will at some point do that. Favourite thermal nail polishes. I only own about 10 thermal nail polishes in my collection. So if I was going to do a top 10, it would just be the 10 that I own. Um, some of them look really, really pretty. What is the one that I had more recently that I thought was great? Oh, the Danglefoot one. I'll put a picture up, which was part of um, one of the UK indie boxes. I thought the transition on that was stunning. So that would probably be, that's the one that comes to my mind. Favourite long wearing top coat. So there's a few options on here. There's like one, one was like my favourite quick dry. I only have one type. I like shiny quick dry top coats. I don't really care about long, how long they last my polish because I tend to only wear nail polish for about two days. If I'm going to wear nail polish for a lot longer than that, I would probably put on gel nails. Um, so when it comes to a top coat, it's really just, are you shiny and do you dry fast? Um, Favourites that I'm going to quickly go through is I love the Zoya Glossy Quick Dry Top Coat. I love Barry M Wet Set, a huge favourite. My OG Rimmel Finishing Touch Hyper Shine. I um, haven't had that one in a while, actually. Those are like my top three um, top coats. What type of hollow do you prefer? I'm going to think, I, I think I prefer linear. I, if, if, I like a sprinkling of scattered in a big Crelly mix, like Glam does that really well with this. There'll be a little bit of flakes, there'll be a little bit of scattered of hollow. I love that sort of mixture and I love how you can mix scattered hollow in, but I think I grab more for a straight, like simple, clean, linear holographic a lot more than I do the pure scattered. I'm thinking of always Dream and Merida and that, whilst I do like them, the linear hollows are what I wear more. How do you photograph your nails for Instagram? I use my iPhone, it's uh, 12, 11 or 12, I, I don't know. Um, I do have a light box that at times has been very temperamental, but at the moment is kind of working okay. So a light box and my iPhone. So lucky that phones are now, the quality of the camera is as good as it is. Favourite nail polish per purchase of 2021? I don't even think I can answer that. There's honestly, as you've seen on my channel, there's so many. I can't be pinned down to a quick answer for that. I'm so sorry. What polishes do you keep a backup of? I think I've done a video on this in the past. I have like an old Zoya box that they are all in here. Uh, my daughter's just joined us. She's sitting just off camera eating an Oreo. She's very pleased with herself. Um, as I said, I have them all in a box here. I think I have about 10 half mainstream, half indies. Um, yeah, I think if I, if I have done a video, I'll link it down below. If not, I can make one for you. The question which is base and top coats. I do wear base coat, but there was a time where I wore it all the time yeah, every day. Yeah. At some point, I did use base coat in every single yeah. manicure, and I just don't anymore. Um, I think that everyone should have two types of base coats in their collection. One is a sticky, so it drives see-through, and it's more of a sticky look base, and then also a ridge-filling one, which is more of a little bit of a tint to it, and does smooth out the nails. I think people do need both. I do own them, but I only wear them 30% of the time. How do you store your polishes? You can see behind me. Ignore this is a lot of mess. So basically, um, some of them are in the beautiful display boxes are on display, um, but for the most part they go into these racks, which are really buried at the moment, into these kind of tiered racks until I wear them. And then once I wear them, they get put in the helmets. So they are in a nice, pretty um, weather good room. This room doesn't get too hot or too cold um, and they are in the helmet drawers. Now polished brands to try this year. I have tried a lot of new brands. This question I'm going back to was posted in January. I have tried a lot of new brands this year and this is, is kind of an aim for me. Even in my last polished pickup order I was like I need to pick a brand that I've not worn before to carry on that kind of theme. So I picked up one from Trio, Trio Lacquer, Trio Polish. Um, so it is something I'm very conscious of and I like think I've tried lots of new brands this year. I'm going to do a couple more questions and then wrap it up before this gets too long. Um, most precious polish. I've done quite a few like sentimental polishes kind of videos before have I? I've definitely had this question before. I have a polish that I wore on my wedding day that I would always like to have a bottle of. Um, 
It's not one of my favourites now. I, I still love that I wore it on my wedding day, which is I Saw You Saw We Saw Warsaw by OPI. I do own a backup of that. Then there are really sentimental ones. There's a couple of nine zeros, one that I made with Jess and one that was kind of a nod to my husband. Um, I thought my whole laptop was just going to come flying at me there. <laughs> Did that answer the question? I think so. Bowls for 2021 in nail polish. I'm always just to keep engaging, enjoying. Grow would be nice, but that's it's very hard these days, especially on Instagram. But just to continue to enjoy and show what I love and wear what I love. Favourite and least bottle shapes. Um... The one actually they've got here is Sally Hansen. Mm -hmm. Sally Hansen is actually one of my least favorite. This is the Insta Dry. So, so these are the ones that actually Andy, we paint Andy's nails with. Um, and mm -hmm. just because they've got, they're like a triangle on the bottom. They don't fit very well in drawers. I like the ones that are like kind of square shaped. So then they fit really nicely and you get a lot more in the drawers. Some that are like these or anything with a funny shaped bottom that you can't stack very well. It's just practicality reasons really for me. Two more because Andy is getting noisier and noisier by the minute. Um, polishes that are so dark they're almost black. The number one question one that comes to mind is Lincoln Park After Dark by OPI. It pretty much looks black on your nails, but really it's a, a dark purple. The last question is, what is on my lemming list? I did do a video a little while ago with this, well, years ago probably, where I did a lemming list and I did an updated lemming list. I do have some on my Instagram in like a highlight of ones that I'm after. But basically all the hair polishes and all the Harry Potter named and themed polishes, that's what I want. Um, so hopefully this video has gone really long, but I think I can edit it down. Here's a lot of Topic Tuesdays for you which have been posted. I will say it is here. So if you want to follow, the, follow this theme and keep a go and do it yourself, that would be really good for you to see. And maybe I can do this in a year's time and we'll do the next year's worth of Topic Tuesdays in that video. Uh, leave me some of your answers to the questions that I've done down below and I will see you all soon. Bye.